Good afternoon everyone. I am Mr. Ish. Thank you for joining me for this video. In this video we are at that specific point in time where we know how to do integration of polynomials. We have looked at the derivation of a parallelogram and then we've also looked at a lot of derivations previously but those were without having some of that requisite knowledge in place and those were mainly to spark some interest. Anyhow, we're at that good point in time where we can show you this. We're looking at a trapezoid. It depends on how you draw the trapezoid or what your basis for the derivation is. Here, of course, we want to look at it in terms of integral calculus. If you were to draw a relatively square-shaped trapezoid, and I'll tell you what I mean by that, just very generally, such that if you were to draw these, you know this right is a trapezoid, you have a square over here, you have this dimension over here which is equal to this dimension, which is equal to this dimension, which is equal to that dimension. For this specific trapezoid, if you were to calculate the area, you know you have a triangle, you have a triangle, you have base height over 2 for this triangle. And you know we're looking at heights and bases over here. We'll have a BH over 2 for this triangle. And if this right here is my base, this right here is my height, then we have a base times height for the square. If you do the cumulative effect of all of this, what do you get? you get bh over 2 plus bh over 2 plus bh. This becomes a bh, bh plus bh, you get 2bh. Right, that represents the area for this trapezoid, but generally you know the area to be this. Half times height times b1 plus b2, it depends on what type of trapezoid you're looking at, whether something which is more square or whether something which is more rectangular. And you know this right here, can be viewed as b2 and this can be viewed as b1 or you can flip them around however what we're going to do is derivation of this trapezoid area formula to come up at this but then at the end of the video i'll show you how we can reconcile this with this and show you that these are indeed the same so that lies for us at the end of this video that little reconciliation procedure and we're going to look at the area derivation here with regards to dx to come up with all the important landmarks you need for this area derivation you have to draw your trapezoid in an intelligent manner. Let me show you what I mean. If you start with a square over here, and then you draw another square next to it, and then another one right over here, you draw a diagonal right over here and a diagonal right here, then you start erasing these accessory sides, see what happens. You end up getting a trapezoid and we'll erase this part and we'll erase this. Now we've gotten a trapezoid which is relatively squarish. This is equal to this, which is equal to that, which is equal to that. We can call just this in general b and the height can be called h. Now we have to somehow configure the x and y coordinate onto this, the plane, so that we can come up with some good points. And this is how I would do it. This is my way of doing it. Right over here. You see how you've gotten it? Now I know this right here is my origin. And I know each of these square sides is b units. If each of these is b units, then this must be b comma zero, then this must be two b comma zero, because each of these is always b units away. This must be minus b comma zero. If this right here is my height, then this right here must be zero comma h, and then this right here must be b comma h. We have to get all of these coordinates so we can define our lines, our segments, and because we're looking at the shapes over here, which are only straight lines, whether they're horizontal, vertical, or diagonal, that's why we're being able to do all of this because they're all polynomials in terms of their integration. We're not looking at curved lines, so we don't end up looking at sine and cosine or hyperbolics or exponentials, and none of those integrals are coming into picture. These are all straight lines. So we have to come up with a bunch of equations and we have to come up with a bunch of intervals. I want to look at everything over here with regards to ax. But technically, if you're looking at things in terms of ay, with regards to dy, you'd be looking at right side and left side boundary curves you know this could be one right side boundary curve this right here vertical line could be a left side boundary curve for this little segment then for this segment this would become your right side boundary curve and this would be your left side boundary curve then for this segment over here this would become your right side and that would become your left side so you can see you'd end up having three intervals but we're looking at things over here with regards to this ax and dx with that template so we have to think about top boundary curves and lower boundary curves and before we do that we need to have come up several equations this right over here can simply be just y equals zero. That line is y equals zero. This right here, this top line will be y equals h, easy, right? And you know these segments are defined by intervals and we're looking at intervals. Everything over here is marked. We have to determine 
the equation of this. Since we're looking at everything here in the ax or dx, we have to look at the equation in the y equals format. We have to have our intervals along the x-axis. So here's a y equals format equation, here's y equals good. We have to do this now. You have two points here, minus b comma zero and zero comma h. See, minus b comma zero and zero comma h, you have to determine the slope. Slope here will be h over b, it's an upward sloping line, and y is equal to h over b x plus h, because you end up having a y-intercept here. So this becomes y equals h x over b plus h. Now we have to look at this next and last line, which is this. You know you can have a negative slope over here, but you have two points, so let's use those. 2b comma 0 and b comma h. The slope here is equal to h over b minus 2b, which is a minus b. So y is equal to minus h over b x plus your y-intercept, which you have to find the y-intercept. If you were to extend this line, it would hit somewhere here on the y-axis, and what would it be? Just take these two points and put them here, x and y. I'll make that 0, and I'll make this x, which is 2b, is equal to your y-intercept, which you have to find out. The b's cancel out. You have a minus 2h. You take it on the other side. This y-intercept is equal to 2h. So my equation suddenly becomes clear to me. My this equation right here is y is equal to minus hx over b plus 2h. And this should be an h over here, not a b. So we have all the relevant equations. This one right over here, this, this, and this. And we have all the intervals marked on this coordinate axis. So let's look at this area and let's start defining it. We have three intervals from one to here, one interval here, and one from here. And then from minus b, remember we're looking at all the intervals along the x-axis, from minus b to zero. And we have to think about in terms of yt's and yb's, top boundary curves and lower boundary curves. The capital Y means equations must be in the y equals format. Here the top boundary curve is just this. So we write it hx plus h over b. Lower boundary curve is this y equals zero, which is meaningless. We don't even have to write it out. Next interval, from this zero to this b. I have my top boundary curve, y equals h, lower boundary curve, y equals 0. I won't even write 0 because there's no need to bring it in. Last interval. If you're doing everything in regards to ay, you'd still have three intervals. x right, x left, x right, x left, x right, and x left. Three intervals. And everything in that case would be from 0 to h. You'd be looking long intervals in the y-axis direction. Anyhow, this last interval is from b to 2b. b to 2b. Just don't make silly mistakes here by using poor handwriting so your B's look like H's or H's look like B's and you can start making a mess up that way. Silly errors will push through and your whole derivation will come out wrong. In this instance from B to 2B, I have my top boundary and my lower boundary curve. My top boundary curve is this, minus HX over B plus 2H, lower boundary curve is Y equals zero, I don't need to bring that in. Now what we have to do is integrate this. And before I do so, I don't like the variable down here. I want the variable up here. And I can switch this around using the properties of integral by bringing in a minus sign. So let's do it. Let's integrate this. Everything here is with respect to x, so the x's will come into the picture. We have a minus over here. This will become an hx squared over 2b. Remember, x here is to the power of 1, n plus 1 divided by n plus 1, x squared divided by 2, you get this, plus hx. This is from a minus b to a 0. This one right here is easy. You have h x to the power of 0, n plus 1 divided by n plus 1. You just bring in an x from b to 0. Let's look at this one right here. You have a minus hx squared over 2b. By now you should know how to do these. Plus 2hx. All of this from 2b to b. We have zeros here, but we have a b here, so we'll have a little bit of work over here to do for the upper and the lower limits feeding in and the difference, you'll have a little bit of work come. Let's look right over here and do these sequentially. When I put a minus b over here, I'm not even gonna put these zeros in because they're meaningless. When I put the minus b in places of these x's and I open up the mi minus and the parentheses, I'll have a minus become negated by the square. I'll have an h b square over 2b, h b square over 2b, but you have this minus sitting out and make it minus. I have this minus coming over here, I'll have a minus hb, but this minus opening with it will make it a positive. 
Let's come right here. I'll have a nothing more than an H B. That's easy. Let's come right here. If I put two B into place of this square, I'll have a four B square and I bring the B in it, I'll do the difference of the two. I'll have four B square minus B square is a three B square. I'll have a minus H three B square over two B. If you didn't see that, look, the two B comes right over here and then the B comes right here in place of this X. Remember these in limits always go into your variables the variable of question which in this case is this x right over here 2b goes in this x square you get a 4b square the b goes in that you get a b square 4b square minus b square is a 3b square likewise you put it right over here in place of this x right over here you will have 2b coming into this x b coming into that difference is just a b 2hb now we'll simplify everything right here along this line that we see I have a minus HB squared over 2B. This B cancels out with this square. I have a minus HB over 2. I have a plus HB plus HB. I have this B over here cancelling out with this B square. And then everything else as you see it. Remember at the end we have to reconcile everything with this. Because we are going to get here in regards to our area as 2BH. And I showed you why. But we have to reconcile this with this at the very end. Let's combine all of this. I have a minus HB over 2 minus H3B over 2. That's really just saying minus HB over 2 minus 3HB over 2 which is a minus 4HB over 2 which is minus 2HB. Minus 2HB. So these two terms give me minus 2HB. Then I have a plus 2HB and a plus 2HB plus 4HB. So when I combine this term and this term I get a positive 2HB or you can say 2 base times height which is how I like to say it and that becomes exactly what I was talking about right here. So the area of this trapezoid is a positive 2BH, 2BH. Now I have to show you why that thing is the same as this and I will do so. The reason why 2BH, 2BH is equal to half HB1 plus B2 in this case is because of this. I do everything here using square segments, right? If this right here, all of these are same. I'm not talking about the diagonals. I'm only talking about these flat segments. If this right here, let's call this B1 right over here. Then this is also B1. This is also B1. This right here is B1. What I really have in this instance with this shape, I have a B1 and I have 3B1, don't I, right? I have B1, B1, B1. One base is equal to 3B1, right? One base is equal to 3B1 the other base is equal to b1 if i were to add those i will get 4b1 and you can even eliminate the b1 designation just keep it 4b when i plug this 4b into this formula right here i get a half h times 4b and then you get a 4b h over 2 which you get to your end result of a 2b h which is what we're trying to show so these are technically the same if you do this reconciliation procedure at the end because again as I will say if I'm looking at this as B1 this right is B1 this right is B1 B1 if one side is B forget the one if one side is B the other side is 3B I have a B plus 3B is a 4B 4B divided by 2 is a 2B 2B times that H is a 2BH and we're done so in this instance we looked at the derivation of this trapezoid using dx. I mapped it out specifically like this so I can draw my coordinate pairs which probably is the most difficult part in all of this. You got your 0 comma 0 and all of these are just b units away. Minus b comma 0, b comma 0, 2 b comma 0. 0 comma h, b comma h you have your equations, your bottom equation, your top equation, this other top equation which is your slanted line, this other equation which is your other slanted line and you go from there. Here's yt, here's yb, here's yt, here's yb, top boundary, lower boundary, here's top boundary, here's lower boundary, based on whichever interval you are from minus b to 0, 0 to b, and b to 2b. And that shows you everything that you need to derive the area of a trapezoid formula. Using integral calculus, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching, have a nice day.